In this video, we're going to be taking a look on the pages uh, Excel 6 and Excel 7, uh, where we're going to be able to understand formulas. Now, Excel is a truly powerful program because users at every level of mathematical expertise can make calculations with accuracy. Now, to do so, you need to use formulas. And, of course, a formula is an equation uh, in a worksheet uh, on there. So as long as you know what you're wanting to do, uh, on there you can input this into a cell and it will calculate it for you. And of course you use the formulas to make the calculations as simple as adding columns of numbers or as complex as creating profit and loss projections for a global corporation. Of course to tap into the power of Excel you should understand how formulas work. So first of all uh, let's take a look at step one and that tells us that we want to click on cell E5. And of course this is for the regular pay for this employee. Now, of course, you notice that down in the worksheet, it gives us the amount 660. However, if we look in the formula bar up here, now we see something different. And, of course, the active cell that we're looking at actually contains a formula, which appears in this formula bar. Now, a few things to note is, is that notice the very front of this, because all Excel formulas begin with an equal sign. That's kind of the way that Excel knows that when you put equal in there, that you're wanting to put in a formula. Now, if you want a cell to show the result of, uh, in this case, uh, or like if you're adding just two numbers, like if you're doing equals four plus two, you're wanting Excel to show the results of your formula. Uh, so if you did equals four plus two in a cell, uh, for example, if I just did this over here, equals, four plus two and hit enter it's going to give me the answer in my worksheet however up in the formula bar it's actually going to give me my formula that I have so I'm going to go ahead and delete that we're going to go back to cell e5 on there and of course it, in this case we want Excel to show the result of multiplying two values in our worksheet and of course uh, and these are two values such as cells b5 and D5 and of course this is what the formula for it would look like. Now when you're entering in a formula in a cell you want to use the cell name or the cell reference and arithmetic operators um, on there as well such as the adding, uh, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, and percent and you can actually take a look at the different uh, arithmetic operators on page Excel 7 out of your textbook and they're just like you would normally see. You know, the plus sign that you have, that is for addition. Uh, if you have a dash, uh, which is located directly to the left of the plus sign on your uh, keyboard, uh, that's for subtraction, or that stands for a negative number. Uh, if you hit the shift key and the 8, and have like a little asterisk there, that's used for multiplication. A forward slash, uh, which you can find next to your uh, shift key on the right-hand side, uh, is for division. And of course you can hit shift 5 for a percentage and that means 4%. Or if you're using exponents uh, you can use what we call the caret key uh, that's on there and that is hitting your shift and 6 key uh, on there. Now once again, now generally when you use Excel you do want to use the cell references uh, that's on there and we'll talk about that here um, in addition because you notice that we didn't have any numbers here except for B5 and D5 and what this is doing this is showing us that we want to take the amount here in B5 which is going to be 40 and we're going to multiply it by the amount in D5 which is 16.5 uh, so if we would take 40 times 16.5 we would end up with an answer of 660 uh, on there. Now, a reason that you would want to use the cell references is because if I would make a change to one of these, it would automatically recalculate it. However, if I would put in the formula, just like I did the 4 plus 2 over here a moment ago, uh, if I would change B5 or D5, uh, it would not automatically update it if I just put in these numbers. I would have to go back into the cell and change the formula. Let's now take a look at step two, and it tells us that we want to click on cell F5. Now, of course, in this case, this is an example of a more complex formula um, on there, which is the calculation of overtime pay. Now, the formula that we use to create this uh, on there is that we're going to take the regular 
hourly rate, which is in cell D5, and we're going to multiply it by 2 uh, on there. And then once we do that, we're going to multiply it by cell C5, which we see here is the overtime hours uh, on there. Now, uh, to do that, of course, in parentheses, we set this off because they do have uh, in Excel uh, typical orders of operation. Uh, generally, you can always, um, uh, I always refer to it as, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Uh, and those are just the uh, order of operations that are there. Uh, parentheses, exponents, uh, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction uh, on there. Now the one key thing to remember is uh, in Excel it doesn't go purely straight down the row. Uh, it does do parentheses first and then of course uh, the exponents but then it takes um, multiplication and division and lumps those two together and of course in a formula it will go from left to right uh, on there and that's how it does its calculations. Then it lumps adding and subtracting together and once again goes from left to right. So if you want to make any major changes to formulas you're going to have to put parentheses around it to block off certain areas. So in this case it's going to do this calculation first of 2 times d5 so in our case it would be 2 times 16.5 and then it's going to multiply it by c5 which is the value of 4 and that's going to give our overtime pay of 132. And of course, once again, you just use parentheses, which creates groups within formulas and indicates which calculations to complete first. Now, an important consideration in complex, which is a important uh, consideration in complex formulas. And of course, when we talk about complex formulas, that's a formula that has more than one operation uh, that's being occurred on there. Now, in this formula, uh, of course, as we said, you know, first the hourly rate is multiplied by 2 because that calculation is in parentheses. And then next the value is multiplied by the number of overtime hours. And because overtime is calculated as twice the hourly rate, uh, we are now aware that we need to watch this. And of course, you know, it gives us our calculation for that. Now, when you're creating calculations, it's important to do a few main things. First of all, you need to know where the formula should be at. And of course, an Excel formula is created in the cell where the formula's result should appear. This means that if you're uh, calculating gross pay, like we did in cell uh, G5 here, if we would create a formula here, um, if we want the results to be there, that's where we're going to have to put our formula at. Second, you need to know exactly what cells and arithmetic operations are needed. Uh, of course, don't guess on this step. You need to make sure you know exactly what cells are going to be involved before creating your formula. So sometimes it's good to write this down on a piece of paper, jot it down uh, on there uh, before you start typing this in. So don't make any guesses. Now the third thing you do need to know in creating formulas is to make sure that you create the formulas with care and that you make sure you know exactly what you want the formula to accomplish before it's created. Of course an inaccurate formula can really have far-reaching effects if the formula or its results uh, are referenced by other formulas. Uh, so you want to make sure that all of your formulas are correct that way so if you're tying other formulas into it uh, such as this gross pay one which we'll work on here after a while uh, we want to make sure that all the other formulas are correct before we use that. And then of course as I mentioned before you want to make sure that you use cell references rather than just values or just the numbers. And of course that's the beauty of Excel is that whenever you change a value in a cell if you use cell references uh, any formula containing that reference to that cell is automatically updated. And of course for this reason it's important that you use the cell references in formulas such as the name of the cell like you know D5 or B5, you know, something along those lines. Uh, that's why you need to use those than rather typing in the numbers such as 40 times 16.5 because it will only give the result for what you typed in. However, if you put in the cell uh, names or the cell references, it will automatically update it anytime you change the values within those cells. And then finally, you need to make sure that you determine what calculations will be needed because sometimes it is difficult to predict what data will be needed within a worksheet. But you should try not to anticipate what statistical information may be required. Uh, for an example, if there are columns of numbers, 
chances are uh, pretty good that both column and row totals maybe should be present uh, on there. And so that would be something that we'll be taking a look at in later sections. And that concludes the information that's on pages Excel 6 and 7 in which we talked a little bit about understanding formulas. In the next video, we're going to be talking about entering labels and values and also using the auto sum button.